no better person to talk about this with than Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, how are you doing? Good. Thanks for having me on again. Absolutely. So, uh, We're happy to have you. What are we taking a look at today? You got a lot, huh? Yeah, we got a lot. Actually, um, there's a chart for, I sent you another chart. I got that uh, one. Yep. Chart eight. Okay. Yep. That chart eight takes in place of chart four. Perfect. Uh, so anyhow, but anyhow, let's give chart one. This is kind of like, a, I've been showing this chart probably for the last month or better, but it's the uh, summation index again. Uh, we got a, a bullish, uh, uh, well, a bullish confirmation of an intermediate term trend when this uh, NYSE summation index falls below minus 700, which it did back in October 27th. And within two months, it should rally to plus 1,000. And on de December 27th, exactly two months, it did have a plus 1,000. That predicts the next 12 months in general. It could be longer but in general. should be an uptrend. That doesn't count. Uh, you know, there will be some minor declines along the way. And what I'm looking at today is, is one of those minor declines. So let's kind of look at that, what's going on. Uh, page or, or chart two. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the uh, uh, daily uh, SPX. Uh, TLT ratio, and uh, so that's segmental down from the top. The RSI is a 10-day RSI instead of a, a, a 12 or a 14-day RSI. Just seems to work better. And yesterday I put it in my market letter. This gets up around 70. Normally you get short-term highs, and all those blue lines across there are times when the RSI for this ratio got above. We got a 30 or 70 plus 70 or higher. And yesterday, I forgot what it was, it was like 68 point something or almost 69. So that was kind of a worrisome sign, even though the market could have pushed higher a little bit more. There's kind of a, a worrisome sign that we're due for a, a, some sort of a, a, well, correction. And obviously, that today, and I warned that in my market letter, but I don't think this is anything really to, to fret about. And this, the reason why, if you look on chart number three, and you, you, funny you brought the VIX up. So that's what I'm, what are we going to be kind of looking at here? The acceleration, basically, the market. Uh, well, there's different ways at top, but bottoms are a lot easier to pick than tops. And this, what's going on right now, is probably a short-term bottom. Is it today? You know, it's a good chance it could be today. But it's not a long-term bottom. It's just a short-term bottom. And what I do is measure the acceleration of the VIX. So there's different ways of, of uh, panic. Panic only comes at bottoms. You don't get panic, you don't have a bottom. So what you really want to see right off the bat is panic in the market. And we get you can measure with, with the ticks. You can measure with the trend. That's T-R-I-N. Or you can measure with the VIX. And I'm sure there's some other indicators that also panic, but I like those three indicators to look at panic, and it only panic only forms the bottoms. Uh, so, do we have panic in the market right now? According to the VIX, uh, I look at the acceleration of the VIX, how fast that VIX moves, and so I got an RSI hooked up to it. I have a, a percent volume or percent Bollinger Band hooked up to it, which is the second window up from the bottom, and I have a rate of change, and this is the two-period rate of change. And uh, this is our hourly chart, so it's a short-term chart. So we did get a, when I made this chart a couple hours ago, the RSI is uh, almost 90. So anything above 70 showing, it does show that the VIX was accelerating at an unusually high rate. And all those times in the past, that's those red lines across the chart. At other times, when the VIX accelerated really fast, where the VIX or the RSI, 10, or the 14 period RSI for the VIX got above 70. And also, the uh, percent Bollinger Band did get above 1.25 uh, today. So we got a lot of panic in the VIX. And. So this is an hourly chart, so it predicts that we're probably at some sort of short-term low. Uh, let's go look at uh, chart number eight. Yes. That's that one to replace yep. this chart number four. This is kind of a similar indicator, but it's on the daily time frame. So you're looking at a daily uh, acceleration of the VIX, and you're looking at an hourly several, uh, acceleration of the VIX. 
So the bottom window is the um, uh, RSI 14 for the VIX, and it has to get above 70 with 70.44 when I did this chart. And the next chart above is rate of change is two periods on a daily part. And it has to be above, uh, I think, 30. It was actually 29.62, close enough. And the next higher window is percent volume, or percent, excuse me, percent Bollinger Band. And it has to be above one. And when I did the chart, it was 1.37. But you only need two of the three indicators uh, to reach bullish levels, suggesting that's your near short term low. Well, we actually had three of them there uh, the RSI, the uh, two period rate of change, and the percent uh, Bollinger Band. So this is probably, uh, and this is expiration week. Normally, you get so you can, normally expiration week, the week before expiration week, you get the weird moves. And it's kind of unusual to get a, a weird move during expiration week, but I think we're getting it here. So I do think we're probably at a short-term low, uh, but it's not on the bigger time frame. Uh, if we end up down around 2% today, 1.82 as, as we're talking, uh, if you get around 2% uh, declines, normally they come in clusters. So what that means, if the market does bounce here, which we think it will because it's still expiration week, and we at a minimum will uh, get back to the gap area, if not get back to yesterday's high. And I think that may be a worthwhile top. I'm thinking back on uh, January 31st, we had a selling climax at around the 482 area. And I was thinking we're going to see that test of that uh, selling climax, which is, uh, again, uh, January 31st at some point, probably this month. But I don't think you're going to do it this week. Uh, you may do it before the month is out, so later in the month. But on a short-term basis here, I think the market's probably at a short-term low, and we may bounce possibly to yesterday's high and not much more. And uh, then we'll probably build some sort of a, a top pattern and, and take a shot back down to 42 area. And, uh, and there we'll, we'll probably find a base and start rallying again. So I don't think we're at a long-term high here. I think we're more of a a big consolidation where that consolidation is basically a, uh, I think I added up around 4% trading range that may be developing here, where uh, yesterday's high is probably resistance, and the January 31st low is probably support, uh, which is about 482. So, uh, and also around the uh, 5,000, 4,000, those round numbers, but we're around that 5,000 level, so I'm thinking we're going to have some back and forth around. Perfect, so yeah. I hear the music. Yeah, Tim, so. please hang right there. Uh, folks, we'll be right back with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. All right, welcome back, folks. This is Jacob Shoup filling in for Tom O'Brien, and we are live with Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Tim, are you still with us? Yep, I'm right here. So Fantastic. Uh, so we were just looking at 8, which was the replacement for 4. That was the VIX. So, um... Do you have anything else to say on this one, or do we need to move the chart? I don't know. Do you have any questions? I'm just, I'm just what I'm no, hearing no. is the, the acceleration of the VIX, and that's panic, and, and that's what I'm trying to point out here that we got enough panic in the market, to, at least on a short term basis, to, to produce a rally that may rally into Friday or something. So, but I think the bigger trend that we're, we're starting a, a trading range where again it would be right above that five thousand level down to four eighty two. Or not five five hundred level uh, fifty five hundred two on the SPYs and the support around four eighty two. Mm -hmm. I think we may bounce around in that area for a while. I don't know how long, but that does not in the, the bull market. I think the bull market. I think we still, in general, have a ten percent more to go before the year is out to the upside. So uh, this is not, you know, a, a time to be short, other sure. than a. I trade back down to 42. So, um, anyhow, do you have any questions? or No, and honestly, Tim, that's why I love filling in on days that you're here because you explain things just so simply, right? I mean, it's complex stuff, you know, but I mean, uh, totally. I mean, that that was all pretty concise, so. 
Okay, well, we'll see if it works out or not. But that's my <laughs> opinion for right now. We'll see how it works out. But, sure. But I'm thinking there's really nothing serious here. You know, the, the serious thing would be if we didn't see any panics in, in anything. And, you know, we got a trend right now, 1.25. It's been a lot higher today than that. But, you know, it's, uh, I like to see it higher, and that may come on a close. I don't know. But uh, anything above 1.2 uh, on a, a down day is it leans bullish. If we had a big down day and the trend was, say, 0.8 or 0.7, that would be a sign of trouble. Because right. that would probably mean we're going to go down until that trend starts to, you know, gets above 1.2. So, anyhow, to me, I think we're, we're okay. You know, market can prove me wrong for sure. But, anyhow, you know, we can move on or um, we can discuss this more. Yeah, why don't we uh, check out what we have on chart five currently. Unless, if there's any questions, too, you have for Tim, uh, guys in the den, go ahead and message them to me, and I can also bring them up to him as well. Um, just throwing that out there uh, for everyone, and we'll wait for those to come in. But we can move to chart five in the meantime, if you're all right with that, Tim. Yep, we can have. Actually, this is an inflation-deflation ratio. Uh, Martin Pring bought this indicator. I don't know how long it's been out, but he's... Uh, the inventor of this, well, actually, I use, I don't know if you never used it this way, I use it, but I use it with an RSI, and this is the, uh, I think the daily, yeah, this is a daily, I'm also going to show a, a weekly time frame, too, but, you know, the, the second window down from the top is in the daily inflation deflation ratio, and the top window is the RSI for this ratio, and it works the same way, if it moves, any indicator moves too fast, too quick, one direction, Usually you're at uh, most time either high or low. On this case, I, I took the RSI, anything below 30 on this ratio. So when this ratio really dives down is when you get the signals. And the bottom window is the uh, GDX, next window up to the XAU. And we actually got a signal last week on this indicator. And so even though we're down 5% today or thereabouts, uh, this indicator can be off a little bit, you know, like a week or so. Uh, so I'm, I don't think we're starting a big decline here, but since the daily inflation deflation ratio uh, is bullish and it was bullish late last week, uh, I think we're still okay because, um, especially with the GDX, a lot of times uh, yeah. GDX trolls a lot of these indicators. But if you flip to chart six, this is uh, the weekly inflation deflation ratio and it's also producing a, a signal it's pretty rare uh to get the the daily and the weekly to have signals at the same time and this is one of those times it's doing it and this chart goes back to 2016 and shows all the times the rsi of the inflation deflation ratio getting below 30 and turning up which it did last week and um and even though we're all 5%, I think there's just kind of a, a shakeout going on here. So I don't think this is the start of decline. I think we're pretty much ending of a decline. And it works pretty well. It also works uh, when the RSI gets above 70 on this ratio, especially on a weekly time frame, which is those red lines across there. You usually at some sort of a high. And uh, so I'm thinking we got, we had last time we got a signal was in October. Now we're getting another one. And pretty much close to the same level, even though we're down a little bit from it. Uh, matter of fact, this if you look at GDX, we really haven't changed much from last August. Things just right. um, going sideways here, and it's still generating bullish signals. If it was generating bearish signals going sideways, that would be a problem. But we're not. We're generating the bullish signals. So I'm still thinking we're probably basing it here. And if you flip to chart 7... Yes, and everyone's uh, asking about the GDX as well in the uh, den too. So, okay, uh, yeah, you know, this this is kind of unusual. I should have probably took this chart back, but we're down. I don't know when I did this chart around five percent or better. And uh, both those indicators normally, when you get above minus ten, which we did a couple of days ago, on the, the uh, yeah you know, the bottom one, I guess you defined it. The bottom one was GDX uh, up down volume with an eighteen day average. The next one to up. It's GDX advanced decline with an 18-day average. And even though the GDX has moved down, this indicator has moved up. And uh, so there's a positive divergence going on. But the rally really doesn't get going until this, both indicators 
or at least one of them gets above minus 10 and stays above minus 10. Uh, what's is unusually here, these two indicators are not really backing off much below minus 10, even though we're off 5% today. So I'm thinking it's just it's kind of a shakeout thing going on. I don't think right. on, on the bigger time frames, this is like it's going to continue down. I, I'm thinking, especially with, uh, you know, if, if the weekly was more near a sell signal than a buy signal, I think that would be worrisome. But that's the opposite. We've got the daily and the weekly both a generating bicycle, and we're still down 5% today. But that kind of, uh, with those two indicators, the RSI probably today will be even lower than it was uh, a couple of days ago, signaling that, yeah, this is probably still low. So um, how low is low? Where is the thing ending? And, you know, I assume it would be right around in this vicinity because I'm not seeing a big, I see a positive divergence, especially on this indicator on um, ch- chart 7. As the market moved down, this indicator was going up, showing that actually the advanced decline is getting stronger, and the actually up down volume is getting stronger. So there must be something in GDX, one stock that's doing most of the damage in there. Sure. Is probably what it's telling me. So we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, and really that was going to be my my question too. You know, when we've been speaking, it's that's what we kind of talk about, right? The GDX is just not moving a lot. It's not. It doesn't have a lot of action, and then. You know, today we do have a down movement, something about 5% on, on some volume, right? And I was going to ask, what would exist, essentially, that could indicate that this is actually a bullish signal? But you actually did answer that, so thank you, Tim. All right. Thank Absolutely. You. Tim, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, we enjoy it every time. Uh, guys, that is Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle. Um, that is ord-oracle.com. Go give it a check out. Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. All right. I'll see you Wednesday. See you Thursday. See you Thursday, Tim. Okay, folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back.